My brother cheated with my ex-girlfriend, and now my mom is demanding I invite him to my wedding. Instead, I cut off my family completely. I, 24 male wasn't even going to make a post about this, but my brother, who I'll call Turk, 25 male, made 4 posts about it, so I thought I should share my side of the story. I'll use the same names he did for the sake of simplicity. My fiancé is Maria, 24 female and my ex is Jen, 24 female. A little over 5 years ago, my brother started dating Maria, my, now fiancé. 3 months after they started dating, they set me up with her, now ex-best friend, Jen. The four of us did a lot together since the girls were best friends. Turk and Maria dated for a year, and Jen and I dated for 9 months. At the end of our relationship, I came home early and found Turk and Jen having sex in my bed. After I processed the situation, I called Maria because I'd want to know if I was in her place. She came over and we confronted Turk and Jen. They dumped us, and I found out two days later, started dating each other. It broke me. I came home to find my brother effing my girlfriend only to run off with her. I had to move back in with my parents. It was infuriating because they kept talking about how happy Turk and Jen were. Throughout the next couple of months, Maria and I started talking. We were two people in similar crappy situations, and we found some comfort in each other. For months after we got dumped, Maria and I officially started dating. Six months after we got dumped, Turk found out that Jen was cheating on him and she left him for the other guy. I actually only found this out today from reading Turk's posts. Maria would get the occasional message from Turk, trying to reconnect but she ignored him. Anyway, moving on to now. Maria and I are engaged and getting married in September. My parents were invited until my mom called me and threatened to not come if I didn't invite Turk. I told her to not bother coming regardless. In my mother's eyes, Turk can do no wrong. When he effed and started dating my ex, I told my parents everything he did and my mom tried defending him. Our relationship isn't the greatest but it was somewhat decent. After I uninvited my parents, I only uninvited my mom but my dad texted me and said he's not coming if my mom isn't. Turk blew up my phone trying to get a hold of me. This is the first time he's even tried reaching out to me in 4 years. Like I said before, Turk posted about the situation here on Reddit as well and apparently my parents told him that Maria and I were getting married and that started this whole thing of them getting uninvited. He stopped calling me but he's blowing up my phone with texts begging me to re-invite my parents and possibly give him an invite. So yeah, I just wanted to get my side out there. Relevant comments. Your mom downplaying what he did to you is kinda telling whose side she's on. I've come across that piece. It seems in Turk's eyes, he didn't do anything wrong either. And trying to get a hold of Maria is also trying to steal her from you. You're better off without all of them from your life, moving forward. Good luck with your upcoming wedding. I read his post and think he is just as slimy now. OP, you are good. I am also super proud of you for standing up for yourself, it's hard. You are now my prime example of what I would like to be in that regards. Please make sure you have security at your wedding. Also tell your wonderful soon to be wife's maid of honor. She will prep to make sure things go alright when your mother and brother show up. We see this time and again. To other family members, they don't care about bad behavior that doesn't hurt them. They just care when their ability to have or represent a big happy family is compromised. So they always put it on the injured party. Make excuses, gaslight, or say crap like that is all in the past. They don't care about anything except letting themselves believe that they have a good family. Screw that. Your brother is an idiot of the highest order and it is fine that you never talk to him again. Your mom can make her choices, as can your dad. Just let them know, there are consequences. You and Maria are healthy and mature and much more likely to be giving grandkids or having family events. If they want in on that, they have to be in. If they turn their back on you know, there is no guarantee that the door is going to stay open. They have to make their decisions and their decisions have consequences. Update. I posted a couple of months ago and thought I should update. Here's a summary since my original post is pretty long. My brother, Turk, set me up with my ex. I walked in on him and my ex making love in my bed and it broke me. My wife, Maria, was also cheated on, so we understood each other. Maria and I dated for 4 years until we got married a couple of weeks ago. 2 months before my wedding, Turk talked to my parents and got my mom to try to get him invited, but all that did was get my mom uninvited. My dad didn't come because my mom didn't. That's basically it. My wedding was amazing. It went so smoothly. I didn't hear from Turk. He didn't even show up as far as I know. My parents didn't show up and try to make a scene or anything, which was good. My mom didn't text me, but my dad texted me saying congratulations. I guess Turk talked to my mom because she texted me shortly after my honeymoon, basically begging me to forgive Turk because he's my brother. I didn't text back. It's not worth it. That was a week ago, and I haven't gotten any other texts from my mom or Turk since. And that's it. The funny part is that Turk is still trying to get our mom to solve his problems, but all of that's behind me now. OP's brother's post. Since it has been deleted, am I wrong for accidentally getting my parents uninvited for my brother's wedding? Back when my 25 male ex Maria, 24 female, and I were dating we set my brother Arthur, 24 male up with his ex Jen, 24 female who was Maria's, I guess now ex best friend. Maria and I dated for about a year, and Arthur and Jen dated for about 9 months. We constantly do things together since Maria and Jen were best friends. Out of our little group, my personality matched Jen's the most, which led to us getting close. I felt so comfortable around Jen, and we both had a weakness. We were at a party, and we did the deed. We snuck around for about a week before Arthur and Maria found out. Jen and I decided we'd be better together, so we broke off our relationship and started dating each other. Jen and I dated for about 6 months, and it was amazing until I found out she was cheating on me and she left me for the other guy. I was heartbroken. I thought I found my match. I kept thinking about how good Maria was to me. In hindsight, she treated me way better than Jen ever did. I went to message her to beg her to take me back but decided to look at her Instagram pictures first, and that's when I found out that her and Arthur had started dating in the 6 months Jen and I were together. They've been together for 4 years, and I found out from my parents that they're getting married in September. It hurt so much finding that out. 
What hurt even more was the fact that I didn't receive an invite. I mean, I know things have happened between us, but Arthur and I are brothers. We're family. When I told my parents I hadn't received an invite, they phoned Arthur and tried to get him to invite me. But all that ended up doing is getting them uninvited. I tried calling Arthur to get them re-invited and to get myself invited, but he didn't answer any of my calls. My parents haven't said anything, but I feel like they're mad at me for getting them uninvited from Arthur's wedding. Am I wrong for accidentally getting my parents uninvited from my brother's wedding? Story 2. So here's the thing. Me, 28 female and Anna, 28 female have been best friends since forever. Like, we grew up together, went through school, first breakups, everything. Naturally, when she had her baby, I was thrilled for her. I even helped plan the baby shower and got super involved in her life as a new mom. But recently, things have gotten weird. Anna's son turned one last weekend, and she wanted to throw a huge party. I'm talking over the top, rented venue, professional catering, decorations, the shebang. Now, I thought we were just going to have a nice little family and friends thing. But nope, Anna had a vision. Fine, no biggie. I figured she could do whatever made her happy for her son's big day. Fast forward to a week before the party. Anna starts hinting that she's a little stressed about costs and how tight things are right now. I get it, having a baby is expensive, but she kept bringing it up in every conversation. I offered to help with decorations or pick up some snacks, but she waved it off, saying she had everything under control. The day of the party comes, and it's chaos, balloons everywhere, a bouncy house, tons of people I didn't even know. I show up early to help set up, and Anna's running around like a headless chicken. Then, as we're putting out the decorations, she casually says, oh, by the way, I put the catering on your card. I hadn't even seen a catering bill, let alone agreed to pay for one. Uh, what do you mean you put it on my card? I asked, trying to stay calm. She looked at me like I was being dramatic and goes, yeah, you know I've been struggling. I figured you wouldn't mind covering it, and I'll pay you back later. Excuse me. First of all, I never once said she could use my card, and second, I had no clue how much this catering even cost. When I asked, she shrugged and said, only about $500. It's not a big deal. $500. For food I didn't even order or agree to pay for. I told her no way. I wasn't paying for something she never asked permission for, and frankly, I didn't have that kind of money just lying around. She acted all shocked and hurt, saying I was being selfish and how it was her son's first birthday, as if I'm supposed to go into debt for a party I didn't even throw. We had a massive argument in front of some of her other friends, and I ended up leaving early. Later that night, she blew up my phone with texts saying I ruined her son's day, that I was being a terrible friend, and how I didn't understand how hard things are for her right now. I just couldn't believe the audacity. After everything, I blocked her. I couldn't deal with the guilt tripping, especially over something so ridiculous. Now, some mutual friends have reached out, saying I was too harsh and that I should have just helped her out because she's struggling. But I feel like she crossed a line. You don't just throw someone's money into your plans without asking them. Right. So, am I the idiot for blocking her, or did I overreact? Edit, to everyone asking why she has access to my card is still a question to me. Maybe she went through my things when I visited her to help babysit her son a day before his birthday. On how she did it, I don't know. But I already filed a dispute with my bank about the charge. I will be checking my card to see if there are any other things she purchased using my card. I really can't imagine that she could do this to me. Update, I never expected this to blow up, thank you all for your advice. I have already filed a dispute with my credit card company. I also told her parents about the incident, and they were shocked by her behavior. They said they would talk to her. I figured they already did because after I told them what happened, she stormed over to my house, ranting about why I was making such a big deal by telling her parents and reminding me that we've been best friends who literally grew up together. I explained where she went wrong. But instead of taking accountability, she accused me of being selfish. She clearly isn't in the right mind. I don't know if she's experiencing postpartum issues, but I'm not going to tolerate this kind of treatment. I also told her that if she didn't stop harassing me over a problem she created, I will file a restraining order. As for the money she used, I've decided to follow your advice and press charges, so she can, hopefully learn her lesson. For those doubting if this story is real, I wish it wasn't. Not only was my trust shattered, but so was my heart. Update, hi everyone, this is part 3 of the story. I really appreciate all your kind words. I have already sorted out everything with my bank and they told me the process would be 7 to 10 business days. I also requested a change of credit card because I don't know if she still has access for my card. She's still trying to prove a point on how I am a bad friend to her. I changed all my locks because she has a key to my house as she was my childhood best friend after all and shared almost everything with her. My siblings and parents all went to my house after they heard what happened to keep an eye on me. I am now considering moving to another city because of what happened. Some of our mutual friends also apologized to me for defending her. Apparently she told our friends that the catering was my idea and that she only spent $100 for it using my card. They didn't know it was $500 until one of them saw the post on Reddit. Anna also saw the post and went berserk because she said I was ruining her image when I didn't even mention her full name and there are literally millions of Anna in the world. And for everyone asking on how she got a hold of my card. Like I said on my previous B post. I was asking myself the same question. It might be that she was snooping through my things while I wasn't paying attention. It might be when I was babysitting for her so she can get some rest. I really don't know and she won't say as to how she got my credit card as well because she felt like she doesn't have to explain anything because we are best friends. Anyways, this will be the last time that I will post about this on Reddit as I will be taking this to court since things already got out of hand and she resulted to threatening me. I never expected that our 20 plus years of friendship will end like this. My heart is broken and my mental health is unstable right now and she's one of the reason why. Thank you again everyone for all of your kind words and advices. She won't stop on proving her point so I filed a restraining order. My siblings and parents are also doing their utmost best to help me get through this. Some comments. OP, so glad you pressed charges. Even if she is experiencing mental health issues due to the pregnancy, this needs to be addressed. 
At least now everyone around her is aware something is wrong and can try to help her. I also wondered if this is a post-pregnancy thing or an aspect of her personality that she was just better at hiding during the friendship. OP, have you done a thorough check of your credit and account since finding out about the theft? I would recommend it. There's the possibility that her theft was smaller and you weren't looking for it. Have other friends do the same. Yes, I have looked through my credit accounts with TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. I also checked with my credit card company if any other chargers were made without my knowledge. So far it was only the catering. It was maybe her first time using my card without my consent. I have let her use my card before especially with baby essentials. I am maybe at fault for spoiling her as well. She must have gotten used to me giving her some free stuff. It's probably not a good idea to go to court over $500. You filed a dispute with your bank. All of the friends and family know the damage is done. The reason why it's not a good idea is because even if you get a judgment which will consume your time to follow through with the dates to go, it will be an even lengthier process to actually get the payment. Time is money and it will certainly not be worth the time even if it is to teach her more of a lesson than that of which she is already learning. No, I'm not filing a case because of the $500. I already filed a dispute for that. She started threatening me and even broke one of my windows so I had to file a restraining order. But even with the restraining order things still got out of hand. So heartbreaking as it is, I have to take action. Story 3. Fake Names. I, 44 female have been so emotional for several weeks, I can't trust my own judgment. Starting around Christmas 2023, I noticed a change in my husband Justin. 44 male. He's usually an affectionate and sensual person, but our lovemaking life went downhill. The summer of 2023 was when our son Randall, 19 male moved out to university. With Justin and I alone in the house, we were making love almost every day before the dip. Other suspicious things started happening. He's going out without me more, woman's perfume on his changes, being more secretive with his devices etc. Early September, I managed to get in his laptop while he was asleep. I was expecting to find evidence of an affair and I had a picture in my head of what the woman would look like. I found a mountain of evidence. There were bare selfies of her, videos of her embating, message exchanged, etc. She didn't look like what I was expecting. She looked at least 50 and at least 200 pounds. My husband is very fit and so am I. He is Hollywood handsome so I was expecting like some thin 27-year-old woman. I sent as much evidence to my email and socials as I can. I showed my sister Betty, 47 female the evidence. I was so emotional that I was insensitive with my words, especially since my sister has a weight problem. I called my husband's mistress a fat old s Betty said I shouldn't be talking about another woman like that. I was so enraged and I asked Betty how could she defend the woman who's effing my husband. Betty said it's no excuse to body shame. I just started crying and Betty hugged me. Obviously my judgment is comprised and I have against my husband's mistress. I hate her so much but did I go too far with my words? Am I the idiot? By the messages, the mistress does know. Justin and her talk about me a lot. She sends happy emojis when Justin talks about how much sexier she is. Justin has messaged her that I'm too thin and muscular. Yes, I am leaving him. I already have a divorce attorney. Even with everything I originally shared. Justin has messaged the mistress that he never loved me. He messaged that he loves her. I used to be overweight until around age 21. I would have gained weight a lot of weight if Justin had asked me to. Me and the mistress look so much alike apart from the weight and she's older than me. The results are mixed but I do think I am the idiot. I will apologize to my sister. I will try my best to avoid insulting the mistress's looks. I also hope everyone who reads this update avoids insulting the mistress's looks. I made an update post explaining what I did yesterday and this morning. I seemed like it may be too long to add here. Update. Thank you to all who left constructive comments. Even if you called me an idiot, I appreciate your comment as long as it was constructed. The person who had been my emotional support during this was Justin's sister Kelly. 49 female. Before last evening, I have been slowly moving out my stuff into Kelly's home. Last evening, Kelly did me the favor of telling Justin's parents Bob. 72 male and 71 female. Last evening, I took the last of my stuff and I went to stay at Kelly's until I can find a place. I made sure to video chat my son Randall first. I can't even remember everything I said so I will give the main points. I told him that he is the most important thing to his father and I that we love him but we are getting divorced. I told him his father was cheating on me and I told him how to find the mistress Vicky. 58 female on social media. I told my son he doesn't have to hate her and that he doesn't have to defend me against his father. I told him I was at Kelly's house and he said he'll visit this weekend. I told him I love you and he said I love you too. I video chatted my husband Justin. The first I said was our son, your parents, your sister and I all know you're cheating. I got some sick satisfaction from the look on his face. I used his mistress's real full name and I said she looks like me. Justin tried to off to say that our son nor his parents hate him. Justin was apologizing and I said I don't care. I said to just make this divorce as smooth as possible. I don't care to find for anything. I asked him to do me his favor and preserve our son's old room as is. He agreed to do so. I ended the video chat. He tries to call again but I ignored it. This morning is when I video chatted my sister Betty. But before the video chat, I sent Betty some of the messages Justin had sent to Vicky where Justin body shamed me. In the video chat, I apologized for body shaming Vicky and I said I wouldn't do it again. Betty apologized to me that she had brought that up during moment. I told Betty that I was staying at Kelly's. I asked Betty if she believes her husband loves and finds her sexy. Betty said yes. I told her then she should start acting like it. She asked if can come to Kelly's this weekend and I told my sister that I have enough support. I told her she doesn't need to come and that she should enjoy her husband who loves her. I was really petty yesterday and this morning. But that is the pettiest I plan on allowing myself to be. I'm in a privileged position that I don't need to fight for money for my soon-to-be ex-husband. I hope he's made this easy, especially since our son knows everything. I'm okay considering everything. Edit, I do not want my original post nor my update post to encourage the hatred of overweight women. I had made a mistake calling her a fat old s when I was ages 18, 19, and 20. I was an overweight woman. 
Hopefully, I will live long enough to be an old woman. I hate Vicky but not because of her appearance. Update, yesterday, Sunday, I called my sister Betty and I told her she can come over my sister-in-law house. Betty brought her husband Mike, 51 male. I gave Betty a proper apology for body shaming Vicky, the mistress. I told Betty that I was angry about her pushback about me body shaming my husband's mistress but that I also got angry at Betty for stupid stuff. I started viewing memories of Betty and my husband Justin in a different light. Like how when Betty uses our pool, Justin would suggest that Betty wears a two-piece. Or all the times Justin called Betty sexy. Or all the times he said that she didn't need to lose weight. I was also comparing my relationship with Justin and Betty's relationship with Mike. The majority of the time, I would have to initiate things with Justin. Also, he never did PDA. But Betty often mentions how Mike can't get enough of her. And I've seen how Mike is always all over her in public. I also noticed a pattern of when Justin was the most sensual and physically affectionate towards me was when I was on my period and bloated. Betty apologized to me again. She also mentioned how awful Justin's messages to Vicky about my body are. I told Betty that I've been jealous of her body since I seen those messages. Betty said she's been jealous of my body since I lost the weight in my early 20s. I told my sister she should go to therapy if she feels that bad about her body. She said she will. I told her I would need therapy for everything that happened to me with my marriage. I also saw my son Randall, father-in-law Bob, and mother-in-law and in person last weekend. I didn't talk about Vicky with my son, Bob, and and I looked through Vicky's Instagram and then roasted her. In almost all of Vicky's Instagram pictures and videos, she's sweaty, messy, and wearing revealing clothes. A lot of her pictures and videos are of her at the club. In some videos, she makes references to pot, and called Vicky trashy and gross. She also said Vicky looks like she smells bad. I enjoyed hearing that a little too much. My mom Jen. 69 female lives in another state so I didn't get to see her in person. Betty and I video chatted my mom. My mom is literally a bigger woman than Vicky but my mom did some fat shaming. Betty and I just let my mom say all of that stuff about Vicky. I know that my son, father-in-law, mother-in-law, and sister-in-law have all spoken to Justin via video chat. Justin got heat from all of them. And all of them refused to see him in person. Justin says he still wants to talk to me but I still haven't said anything since that video chat. There is nothing he can say, I get it. He wanted the curvy bad girl. He's free to have fun with her. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.